Hey guys, this is Dr. Sean over at Natural Body Works, and I'm going to answer some questions today that people have asked me about some of the techniques that I do. And mainly, I'm going to answer and we're going to explain the difference between acupuncture and dry needling. So the, here's really the difference. In acupuncture, we use what are called the meridians, these little lines along this guy here, and you'll see on the posters, and you see them all over the place on different posters, the little points, what are called the acupuncture points. Now you can use them as acupressure points sometimes too, but that's just with the thumb, and we'll talk about that later. But acupuncture is very specific. Each one of the points are in a very specific place, and you should be able to get them within about the size of a dime, you know, to really be more efficient. Now you can tell where they are based on a measurement system called the sun, or C-U-N, kun, which is one inch. So for me, that right there, is one inch. So this is about three inches and that's about four inches so we can measure up different places uh, where the different points would be. Now they're consistent on everybody but the measurement is not consistent because your thumb might be thinner, narrower, or wider than mine. So that's how we would measure and find the points for acupuncture. Acupuncture also has to deal with the flow of energy and the flow of what's called chi or key energy. Now that energy is really kind of the life force energy. You can liken it sometimes to um, oh, the nervous energy, but it's more uh, subtle than that, a little bit different. So that's acupuncture in its way. The difference also is the acupuncture needles will be much generally thinner and smaller. I have here some examples. So this is a uh, this very small acupuncture needles I have. These are only about, gosh, these are so tiny. It's about an eighth. I don't even know if you can see that. That's about an Oh, a quarter of an inch long, and those are very, very tiny. I'll get some other ones here for you. These ones are pretty typical ones I use. These ones are about point, uh, I think point one eight or point two zero millimeter in diameter. That's this way, and then the length is I think fifteen millimeters. So that's kind of the typical ones I use. These ones here are point one eight by uh, 25 millimeters, so it's a little bit longer. They're nice and flimsy, they're easily bent, as you can see, and that gives us a chance to um, <coughs> uh, use them in a, in a deeper way, you know, or not a deeper way, but is a uh, little bit more, you know, maneuverability with those. Now, dry needling is a little bit different, so the dry needling technique is uh, really kind of a, uh, it's a play on words, because it means there's nothing in the needle. It's a dry needling. So originally they were using these. This is a syringe. So this is a hypodermic needle right there, and you can see you can even see the bevel maybe on the on the end of it. I think I'm not sure if you can see that, but we'll see if it focuses. So if you put something in this needle like this, you would have say lidocaine, benzocaine, or even a steroid. You can inject this into the area, sometimes the spine, sometimes the uh, shoulder, or something like that. Those you can deliver the medication directly to the area and usually they're anti-inflammatories which reduces inflammation and there's a lot of different uh, um, side effects you can get with those. So some side effects like headaches, you can get nausea, you can get vomiting, you can get, um, the, if it's steroid injections, you can deplete the, the immune system and that can cause trouble, it can make you anxious even. So again, that's dry needling, or that's wet needling really is what it would be. This is something like this too. This is a, basically like a, um, a needle that one would use for diabetes. Very, very small, tiny needle, but I can still fit my needles inside that little tiny guy there. Um, they're measured a little bit differently. I did an article on this, and I'll post that for you guys if you want. But I do have some other examples of some what we call dry needling. Now, if you're doing this with nothing in it, that's a dry needle. What you would do is you would find a, a trigger point or a, a tight spot, and they're also called ashi points, or sometimes they're called subos, T-S-U-B-O. Um, those areas will be usually on muscles. They don't tend to be on the points here. So if we turn this fella around, we can see, for example, up through this area here, you see these little lines through here. You may be able to use a needle down here where there's no points. That would be dry needling, or ashi. Uh, technique. Up here we have the points, very specific, uh, along, these are along the, the, um, the small intestine meridian, and this section through here, uh, there's a lot of muscles, so you have the whole rotator cuff, you can work on shoulders, you can work on um, neck, and all of these different kinds of things. The needles are different as well, you know, generally. Uh, the needles for um, your acupuncture and versus dry needling, they're the same really in the needles, but it depends on the practitioner and whoever's doing the work. I use these ones, these are nice and long, and they're pretty thick, and you see they're pretty wobbly there. This one here is about five inches long, 
that's 125 millimeters and uh, I'm not going to even put it back in there because I can't see it but um, <clears throat> those are about 30.3 millimeters wide other ones I use too which I'll show you are these ones here this is the most common these are 0 0.30 millimeters in diameter so a third of a millimeter in diameter and they're about 40 millimeters long you see those there now what I like about these ones is they have this little loop in the end and you'll see other videos of mine where I have the loop spinning and the muscles will grab onto it and spin it the opposite way so there's the kind of difference okay dry needling not on the points acupuncture definitely on the points dry needling for muscle spasm better for muscle spasm that lasted a long long time you've had them for more than a couple months um, that's really where it shines the most so other things to know as if you saw you might have seen they come in a blister pack so a little brand new blister pack like this and that blister pack is sterile you open them up you use the needles you throw them away they're a disposable single-use needle now you can use them the same same visit same patient in different places perhaps but generally completely never on anybody else in the old days they used to because metal was hard to come by and hard to manufacture so they would just either you know dip in alcohol perhaps or maybe uh, put it over a fire or even rub it on their hair because the sebaceous glands up here will um, release sebum which is uh, uh, antiseptic so other things we do too is we always want to now you see some practitioners will use rubber gloves you don't really need to because you're not really touching them and there's no bodily fluids to really get on you you might have a drop of blood for that we use the handy dandy cotton ball right there so the cotton ball and we'll use also some what is it, rubbing alcohol right there there we go rubbing alcohol and you squirt down like this you'll rub the area in a little circle opening 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 wider and wider, wider and that'll sterilize the area and get you ready to work so as long as you do that, you should be good to go. And that's with acupuncture or dry needling. It's completely safe. It's way safer, actually, than injecting stuff like lidocaine or benzocaine or novocaine or steroids or whatever into a joint or into a muscle because you don't have to worry about the displacement of the space with the fluid, which can cause more problems. You don't have to worry about any inner re uh, reactions or interreactions with the medication that they're delivering. So what we do is when the dry needling happens, we get a small bleed in that area. I mean, look at this needle. You can kind of see how big it is. You might be able to, whoop, there we go. You can see how big it is. That when it goes in, will cause a little bleeding inside the tissue. That bleeding inside the tissue will help um, attract, as an irritant, um, new white blood cells. It will release a histamine. So that's a little red spot we'll get around it, and I'll go over that too later on so anyway that's uh, dry needling versus acupuncture okay got it acupuncture has to do with the energy movement very good for chronic problems uh, organic problems things with different organs it has to do with the organ systems and it has to do with the energy the chi energy flowing through these meridian systems dry needling doesn't have to be on the spots generally used for pain or muscle spasm so anyway that's that there you go that's it this is dr. Sean over here with uh, uh, I will name him some later. Anyway, I uh, uh, hope you're having a good one. Give me a questions. Give me comments. Uh, let me know. I do answer all the comments and questions. I am going to do one on intercostal neuralgia uh, with acupuncture and acupressure. We're going to do a couple other videos, which I'm working on as well. And uh, there we go. So, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, subscribe so you can see more of what I'm doing. And I'll do usually updates for these ones too. So, there'll be a second and a third one sometimes and those kind of things. Anyway, this is Dr. Sean over at Natural Body Works in Parker, Colorado. So, I hope you guys are doing well. Take care. Bye.